Okay, we're going to take a look at a couple of the homework problems. The Well, actually, the homework problems. I think there are two of them uh, at the end of Chapter 18, dealing with uh, uh, break-even point and cost-volume profit analysis, uh, which we've been talking about in this chapter. So the, the two problems that you have, the first one starts with this Praveen company. Uh, now, you, of course, have a little different numbers here, but we're going to work through this, and you apply the same uh, the, the same reasoning and uh, a solution procedure to yours. It says that they market rope products. They're considering the future product of a product XT. Um, it's measured or it's manufactured and marketed independently, independently of other products, which is simply to say they can, they can eliminate this and it won't affect anything else. It says next year's plan calls for a $200 selling price. Fixed costs are $270,000. They can, they can, uh, uh, and, and at 270,000, they can make 700,000 yards of rope. Forecasted variable costs are $140 per, per 100 yards of rope. So don't let this 100 yards get, get you. It's $200 for a roll. Uh, that's what they sell for. It costs $140 for a roll. Fixed costs are $270,000. $270, so they want us to estimate the break-even point in, in sales, sales units, number of units to be sold, number of rolls, and then sales dollars. This problem does not have you do a, we haven't set it up so you have to do part two, but you have to do part three, contribution margin um, uh, income statement. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and go to the whiteboard and, and write down what we have here and show you how this is done. It's fairly, fairly straightforward. These are rolls of XT. Fixed cost, $270,000 for fixed costs. Per unit, we have a selling price and a variable cost. We sell them for $200 a roll. The variable cost is uh, $140. That's the variable cost. So they want to know what's the break-even point in units, how many rolls do we need to sell, what's the break-even point in sales dollars, same point, just how many units is that, how many sales dollars is that. So how do we, how do we compute that? So this is just the information that was given to us. How do we, how do we actually do it? Well first, let's compute the contribution margin per unit. We're making $60 a roll. So the contribution margin is $60 per roll, which is, what percentage contribution margin is that? 60 divided by 200? 30%. That's the contribution margin ratio. So now applying the formulas. How many rolls do I need to sell making $60 a piece on them after accounting for the variable cost to make enough of these to cover my fixed costs. Well, remember the formula. Fixed cost divided by contribution margin dollar amount gives you units. Yeah, divided dollar by dollar, your answer will be units. That's $270,000 divided by $60 per unit. Going to have to sell 4,500 units or rolls. How about sales dollars? Well, I could do this. I could actually, well, I could multiply this times $200, 4,500 units at $200 a roll. How much is that in sales dollars? 900,000. But let's do it the formula way. To arrive at the break-even point in sales dollars, it's fixed cost divided by contribution margin ratio. 270 divided by 0.3, which is 30%, $900,000. So we need, in order just to break even, we need to sell 4,500 rolls, which is $900,000 in sales. It's good to know. If my current level of sales is a million, 
I got a margin of safety of $100,000. I'm 100000 above the break-even point. And they're not asking for that, but that's the chapter, part of the chapter. Now, they want us to compute in, in the next section a contribution margin income statement. So now the contribution margin income statement is just a different way of showing the income statement, the revenues, costs, and net income. It just proves that this is the break-even point. Um, and, and, and its subtotals, the subtotal in the middle is not gross profit, like on a, 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 a regular income statement, a gap-based income statement, generally accepted accounting principles. But this is a contribution margin income statement. Sales. Uh, sales at the break-even point would be 900000 What would my variable costs be for those 900000 Well, two ways to calculate it. The variable costs are running 70% of sales. That's why my contribution margin, what's left is 30%, because the variable costs are 70%. So I can take 70% of that, which is $630,000. Or I can say, well, I know that the break-even point, this 900000 in sales, is 4,500 units. And the variable costs on 4,500 units at $140 a piece is 630000 So the contribution margin is 270. Fixed costs are 270. Therefore, net income is zero. That's the contribution margin income statement. It's an income statement in the contribution margin format. I'll show you the solution in the text just to make sure. And I guess I shouldn't have these negatives here because they are they are costs. So this is the way it looks, just like that. Sales minus the variable costs gives you contribution margin minus the the um, fixed costs is zero net income. That's all that was to that first problem. The formulas aren't terrifically complex, and they're very closely related to each other. Let's see, what's the next problem? Back to the text here. I think the next one that you do is this one, Astro. It's the next one. So let's see what it says. Astro sold 20,000 units of its only product they actually incurred a $50,000 loss. They aren't, they're not going to complicate it with income taxes. And here's how they, it says as shown here, here's how they did it. They've got an income statement in the contribution margin format. So they do have a subtotal for contribution margin. It says the, during the year, the production manager notes that variable costs can be reduced 50% by installing a machine that automates several of the operations. So they're thinking about replacing some direct labor, which is a variable cost, with a machine, which is a fixed cost. So they can reduce variable costs by 50%. They can cut this to 400000 But to do that, they're going to have to in you know, install this machine which is going to cost 200,000 a year, so this is going to go to 450,000. Maximum output is 40,000 units. So they can cut the variable costs, but it'll increase the fixed cost. Now this is that sensitivity analysis that we've talked about. What do they want to know? Well, they, first of all, they want us to calculate the break even point. So obviously, if we got to have more sales than a million dollars to break even and don't make the mistake of saying oh well I need a million fifty thousand in sales because if you increase sales these variable costs are going to go up use the formulas then compute the break even point if the machine is installed then prepare a forecasted contribution margin okay well, well we'll get to these things let's start with what they first wanted to know compute the break even point for sales dollars in 2017 okay I'm going to go to a, grab a piece of paper here. I'm just going to jot down what they told us in the book. 
Sales were a million dollars. Variable costs were 800,000. Therefore, the contribution margin was 200,000. Fixed costs were 250. So we have a net income, which is a loss, $50,000. Now this is an example of where I don't have the unit data. I don't, they didn't give me directly the unit data. But I can compute the break-even point. I know it's somewhere above a million dollars. So how I would do that is that they want the break-even point in sales dollars. Looks like my contribution margin is 20%. I'm keeping 20% of my sales after accounting for the variable costs. So variable costs are 80% of sales. But this is what I want to know, 20%. So the break-even point in sales, 250,000 fixed cost divided by the 0 0.20 looks like the break even point is actually $1,250,000 so my sales, I need to increase my sales by 250000 just to break even uh, let's see here, trying to get to the trying to get to the text here I guess we don't need to get to the text quite yet. That, so this was the answer to A. That's the break-even point currently with how we're running operations. Now, they want the next one is compute the predicted break-even point, assuming that we install that, uh, that new machine. Well, if we install that new machine, that's going to change the, this a little bit. It's going to drop this to, said it's going to cut our variable costs in half, but it's going to add how much? 200,000 to fixed costs. So it's going to cut my variable cost to 400,000, which will change my contribution margin now to 600,000. And my variable cost, my fixed cost will be 450,000. So now my new, uh, as a result of this, my new, um, my new contribution margin is 60 percent. You see how that works? Make sure I'm on the right track here. So the new break-even point, given this this these changes, fixed costs 450,000 divided by the new contribution margin. 750,000. Wow. Oh, so I'd be, with that level of sales, I'd actually be making money? Yeah, notice that this would actually generate net income, 150,000. That's, that's quite a shift. I think we, if, if, if I have nothing else on the boards, I'd have to do this, because I'm losing, I don't know if I can get my sales up to 1.25, that I'm already above the 750, so I think I need to put in that new machine. Next thing they want is prepare a forecasted contribution margin income statement that shows the, re the expected results with the machine installed. So they simply want me to do the, an income statement showing if I install this machine, what would it look like? And here's what it would look like. I, I kind of laid it out just so I could see what the contribution margin was, but here I'll show you what the solution is. Get it up here. Right there. Yeah, the, the, the variable cost got cut in half. We added two hundred thousand. We're making money. Making money. Sweet. What do they want to know now? Compute the sales level required in both dollars and units to actually earn two hundred thousand dollars of pre-tax. This is, the, of course, they 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 always say pre-tax because they don't want to uh, complicate things with taxes with the machine installed and no change. So, this is a target net income problem. Let's go back to this. Target net income. All now now notice that at at sales of yeah, sales of a million dollars, I'm actually making 150,000. That's because I'm currently above this new break even point. 
this is the new break-even point, and I'm above it. That's why I'm making $150,000. But what would my sales have to be to not make one hundred and fifty, dollars but to make $200,000? This is just target net income. Remember what we do with target net income? Add it to the denominator, or add it to the, what's 200? Add it to the numerator. So what would my sales have to be, this is what this is saying, what would my sales have to be so that at a, at a contribution margin ratio of 60%, I'm keeping 60% of the sales dollar, what would my sales need to be so that my 60% would cover my fixed costs and give me 200,000? Well, notice that these add to 650, 650 divided by 0.6, 108. Three, 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 three. That's what my sales would need to be, so that my, so that that my sixty percent would cover my fixed costs and yield seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars or uh, two hundred thousand dollars in net income. The last part of the the uh, the the uh, part five wants another contribution margin income statement just to prove this, just to prove it. So it looks like this. If my sales were 1 million, eight, well, let's see how, going back here, they actually calculated, oh, they, oh, I'm sorry, I missed one part. It is 1083333, and they also wanted to know what is the, both dollars and units both dollars and units. Well, in order to calculate the units, I need to know how many units that I'm actually, or what the sale, the, the, the price is, and you can get it from here. If for 20,000 units, my sales were a million dollars, if you divide that out, it looks like I'm selling them for $50 a piece, 50 bucks a piece. So, if my net ink, or my, if my sales to, to generate $200,000 of net income would have to be 1083333. That's what we calculated right there. Divide that by, by uh, where is it? There, 1083, okay. Divided by the $50, we'd have to sell 21,667 units. So that's the break-even point in sales dollar and in units. Then they want us to prove that, that is the, that's, that's the level of sales that I would need to generate 200,000 of net income by, by preparing the income statement in the contribution margin format. So if I did, in fact, sell 21,667 units at $50 a piece, my sales would be 1083, well, 350. Variable cost would be $20 a piece. That $20 is um, $20 is we can get that. Oh, I, I need to go back here. The, the $20 dollars will come back to is the we dropped our variable cost to $400,000 for those 20,000 units. That's $20 a piece. Fixed cost would be 450000 So therefore, I'd have $200,010 of net income. But that's your, we're essentially showing that these sales will generate the $200,000 i am looking for. Yeah, so those are our, that's the two problems that you need to work on. It's basically generating data regarding break-even points. The second problem has the target net income uh, included with it, and these these contribution margin income statements just prove that our answer is right. That's all it is. It just we calculate it and then we just run it down: sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost, and it does arrive at the number I was looking at, whether it be zero at the break-even point, or my target net income if that's if I included that in the uh, in the formula as well. That's what this chapter is all about. So it's what it is. So anyway, take a look at that. Try these homework problems, uh, and then the next video I'm going to load here, probably it, is, it might already be here by the time you look at this, but uh, it'll be a couple more days. I'm going to give you a chance to work on this chapter, and then I'll load the video on chapter uh, 19. So 
Hang in there. Stay with me.